All right. So today we have Simone Rotter, who will tell us about discrete gauging in 40 exceptional S folder CFTs. Take it away. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much for having me today. And uh, I will talk about some work that I did uh, uh, back in Milan with my PhD supervisor, Antonio Mahiti. And most of what I will say today is based on this uh, paper that you can see that came out uh, at the end of uh, last year. Um, okay, so we will talk about a class of uh, four-dimensional SCFTs, uh, which are called exceptional S-folds. And these are SCFTs that preserve n equals three supersymmetry. So this will be 12 plus 12 uh, supercharges. And these are strongly coupled theory. And we will be Look, we will be looking for uh, the presence of discrete gauging, uh, and in particular, how the discrete gauging affects the modular space. And more in particular, we will look at, uh, at the singularities of uh, the Coulomb branch of this series. We will find that some of these uh, SCFTs, which are defined from geometric engineering, actually turn out to be discrete gauging of three theories. So they are uh, uh, trivial, they have trivial dynamics. And then we will build a more general constraints for a wider class of uh, SCFTs, which are particular class of N equals to SCFTs that are characterized by some value of an invariant that's called uh, the characteristic uh, dimension. Uh, so the plan is to review some well effects of N equals to SCFTs, which are probably very well known to most of the audience. And then look uh, at a specific example, which are N equals for orientifolds. folds in particular, how the discrete gauging is involved in the type to be description of this series. And this will be mostly to develop some technique to identify the presence of discrete gauging that will then apply to more complicated setups, uh, which will be the regular S folds and uh, then the exceptional S folds. In the case of exceptional S folds, our main result will be that uh, many of these theories uh, are actually discrete gauging of uh, free theories. And then we will develop this constraint uh, that I just uh, talked about. Um, so some quick review. We will look at n equals three activities, which are in particular n equals two activities, and also some asymmetry, which contains uh, uh, the asymmetry group SU2R times U1R. And in particular, we look at the Coulomb branch, which is uh, the modular space of Vauqua, where uh, U1R is uh, broken, generally broken to a discrete subgroup, uh, while the SU2R is uh, not broken. And on a generic point of this modular space of work for the Coulomb branch, your theory has a nice infrared description in terms of uh, a bunch of uh, free U1 gauge theories. And on top of that, uh, well, and U1 uh, say to the power R, where R will be called the rank of your theory. And on top of the, the U1 uh, uh, free gauge fields, we will have some generically Massive that we boson some monopoles, and we look at the set of charges uh, of these W boson some monopoles, and this is called the, the charge lattice of your trees, which are denoted as gamma. And this comes with the Adirac pairing, which is an anti symmetric map from the charge lattice to the integers. So, so as I said, the, these W monopoles, these W bosons and monopoles are generically massive, but they can become massless. If you have a one charge state, uh, which is BPS, then it will become massless whenever the central charge is zero. And this generally identifies a one uh, complex dimensional uh, co dimensional sub variety of the Coulomb branch where the Coulomb branch itself develops a singularity. Uh, and so you will have some singularities of this Coulomb branch where your description, the description in terms of U1 breaks down and you have some non trivial dynamics. But the point of uh, today's talk is that there actually is uh, another way that you can generate uh, uh, singularities of the Coulomb branch, which is through discrete gauging. So say that you start with a theory with uh, some Coulomb branch C, and you gauge a uh, discrete zero from symmetry G that acts non-trivial on the Coulomb branch. Then your new theory will have this Coulomb branch, which is C um, quotiented by some G prime, which is uh, the part of G that acts non-trivial on the Coulomb branch. And this will generally have additional singularities. And the point is, is these additional singularities don't have any massless charge state. So the dynamics on those will be trivial. And just to give a very quick um, example, you can consider 
probably the easiest theory, which is 2n equals 4. And uh, the Coulomb branch is a similar z2, and you have a massless w boson at the singularity. So at the singularity, you have an interacting SFP material dynamics. So, but you can also consider another theory, which is O2, and this turns out to have the same modular space, uh, and actually um, also the same Coulomb branch, of course, which is similar to Z2. And in this case, uh, you don't have massless state that is singularity. The U1 description is valid. And this is because you can think of O2 as a discrete gauging of U1. Take U1 uh, and you gauge child conjugation. So you have the same Coulomb branch, but uh, you can have the, a different uh, well, different dynamics, of course, on the singularities. Sometimes the dynamics in non-trivial, but sometimes it's trivial. And well, in this example, this was easy. Well, we, you know, we don't have charge state to begin with, so you cannot have massless charge state. But when we move to uh, more complex, complicated theories, uh, and equals three CFTs, then we will be able to compute the Coulomb branch geometry from uh, the the geometric engineering setup that we have. And then we will have to ask uh, uh, which singularities uh, support non-trivial dynamics and which singularities due to discrete gauging. And the way that we will do it is exactly a, well, similar to this example. We will look at the, the charge lattice of this theory and see where we can have a, a massless charge states. Um, so just for if you want to just know the explicit results, um, when we look at S folds, uh, N equals three S folds, and these are classified by some ADE algebra and some integer scale, uh, which is three, four, and six. And I will call the type A regular S folds. These are an interpretation uh, set up uh, um, in type B, while the type D and D I will call exceptional S folds. These are built from uh, uh, a particular M theory setup. And uh, we look at the charge lattice of these two theories. In the type A, we, we look at PQ strings because we have a type of description. While for the exceptional assholes, we instead we will build some generic constraint from the charge lattice. And um, so the result is that for the type A regular assholes, depending on the particular uh, asphold and uh, the values of K, uh, we, find, we either find this kind gating or not. And at the end, we will match the, all of the result that was already obtained via some holographic techniques by Yahoo and Tachikawa in 2016. So that's a, a nice check. Uh, while for the case of uh, exceptional aspects, we focus on the type E case. So these are, will be nine theories in total, right? So six, seven, eight, and then K equals three, four, and six. And eight theories will turn out to be discrete gauging of. Uh, um, Three theories, and there is only one theory that can be an interacting SFT. This is the case of E8 algebra with K equals four. And the reason for that will essentially be that uh, all the other theories uh, do not uh, admit a consistent lattice. Right, so that's the main idea of the talk. So we look at uh, a set toy model, an example where we know the results and we want to develop uh, a technique uh, to, to understand the, uh, the presence of this region. We just take a regular stack of ND3 brains, put it on a non plane, and now the modular space uh, is parameterized by the motion of the trees on the transfer space. And you can choose a real dimensional slice of the transfer space, and the Coulomb branch will be the motion of the trees on this uh, transfer space, which is a C mod V2. And uh, if you compute this at the generic rank n, the, what you obtain is that the Coulomb range is Cn modded by this value of SO2n with a similar product of Z2. So that's just from geometry. And uh, this Coulomb branch will have a bunch of uh, singularities. And we want to see what happens at each singularity. So the, the singularities that come from the quotient by the value, uh, well, this corresponds where duty trains are on top of each other. And here, well, you, you, you know that you have uh, non-trivial dynamics. These are just two little brains that come together in flat space. So they will support some uh, support uh, SU2 and equals four. While for the other singularities that come from these uh, Z2 quotient, this corresponds to the 1D3 on top of the O plane. And here, the answer will depend on the description. 
So we will look at these particular singularities. And uh, to do so, we look at the, as I said, at the charge lattice. And here, the charge lattice uh, can be computed from uh, the PQ strings that are stretched between the various D3 brains and the images as well. So let's look at the Z2 singularity and take the O3 minus as an example. And here you can have uh, any PQ string stretched between one D3 and its image. And you can compute uh, the electric and magnetic charges. A fundamental string will have charge uh, 2,0, and a new one will have charge 0,2. And then all the other PQ strings, uh, uh, the, the charges of the other PQ strings will be generated by this two, by integer combination. So you have these two charges. In particular, you can compute uh, the direct pairing to start to be four. And we will look at uh, a particular invariant of this uh, sub lattice. And the invariant is uh, the absolute value of uh, this, the direct pairing J. And in this case, it's equal to this direct pairing, which is four. And this invariant is, uh, it uh, corresponds to the order of the one symmetry group of this theory. Uh, so this means that uh, the theory supported on this singularity would have a one for symmetry group of order of four. So we, here we expect a theory that is uh, rank one. There is only one little brain. It has at least n equals to supersymmetry and then has this value of the invariant. But the point is that we now believe that we have a full classification of rank one n equals to a CFT. That's essentially based on the classification of various singularities. And in particular, this invariant can only take two values. It's either equals to two, in the case of n equals to star C2. And uh, here I'm considering n equals four as a particular case of n equals to star, where the mass is zero. So it's either equal to two or equal to one in all the other cases. So this means that the thing that we are looking at here actually does not exist because uh, this is an invariant that you have to match, and uh, there is no rank one and equals to a CFT uh, uh, as this value of the invariant. And so the way out is that uh, actually the states from this particular PQ state that are the ones from one d to its image, well, they cannot be BPS. And the singularity itself, well, doesn't have any massless states on it, and so must be due to a discrete cage. And this matches with what you know, because the you know the field theory in this case is O to one which is a Z2 discrete gauging of SO2. Um, so quickly, if you consider another plane, like uh, the O3 tilde minus, well, now there's a difference. You can have strings stretched between the O3 itself and 1D3. So the lattice of charges on this singularity is different. And um, this invariant, I know you can compute it, is equals to two. And this is an allowed value for the function. So, uh, this, this Z2 singularity can support massless state. And actually, we have known dynamics, and this makes sense because you know that now the field theory is uh, SO2 n plus 1 n equals 4, which has uh, um, non trivial dynamics on this particular singularity. Um, so, just a quick recap we computed uh, the, the Coulomb branch simply from geometry, I say from geometrical considerations. And then we have uh, two cases. In the case of the O3 minus, we found the theory of discrete gauging, discrete gauging of SO2 n, while the O3 is the minus, and actually all the other uh, um, possible O3 planes, they will have uh, non trivial dynamics also on the singularities. And this uh, checks out because the value of SO2 n plus one is exactly equal to this uh, semi direct product. Um, well, this is all well known, but the point is that we didn't use. The Lagrange itself, we just use it as a, a check. And we only lose the charge lattice uh, and uh, well, the corresponding Dirac per J. OK, so we can move on to um, regular S-folds, or in general, more complicated theories. And now the point will always be your computer uh, Coulomb branch from, from the geometry. Then you look at each singularity, and you see which can support uh, uh, non-trivial dynamics. So, okay, there are any questions up to now? Okay, so we looked at the uh, regular S folds. This you can think of generalization of empty folds. So now you have a, still a stack of entity brains that probe another singularity seems like to be 
which is C3 model ZK. And this ZK involves uh, well, a space time overlay fold, which uh, we can think of as an asymmetry twist, but it also includes an um, S duality transformation. So some element okay of the type of the S duality SL to Z. This element will become a symmetry that you can gauge by a particular values of uh, the axial duality. And you have this constraint that okay to the K must be equal to the identity so that uh, this is actually a ZK subgroup of SL to Z. And you can choose the asymmetry and the S2 like such that this top preserves n equals three. And the, the four dimensional field theory that you get is, uh, is what you call the NS for the CFT. Right? So there are five of K, where K equals one is not uh, a projection, K equals two, those are to be the orientifold. This is why you think of the S fold as a generalization of the orientifold. And now you have K equals three, four, and six, which are the actual n equals three S fold theories that we are interested in. So again, we put our DT brains uh, and we look at the motion on the transverse space, which is a slice of transverse space. And the motion of the tree here will give you the Coulomb branch. And you can do the same computation. Now you find that from the geometry, the Coulomb branch is CM bonded by some known complex refraction group, which has this name, with a summary product with the Z3 in this case. And again, uh, the singularity is given by this G33M. They always respond to the trees on top of each other. There, the dynamics is non trivial. Uh, so we only have to care about this additional Z3, which happens when the D3 is on top of the S fold. Is this uh, 3N instead of N? Uh, the, the full modular space will be C to the 3N, but the, uh, you choose, uh, then you choose a slice uh, of the transverse space that corresponds to the Coulomb branch. So I'm only looking at the Coulomb branch. What does this mean? Uh, this means that uh, you have uh, the motion on the transverse space, the acid, and you choose as n equals two sub of the n equals the. How do you do that? Well, you have various choices. So, for example, the, the asymmetry of do you do the it? n equals. How how do you do it? Uh, why? Do you uh, well, you choose. Do it? What, or why just you, because. Uh, why could you just uh, treat the whole space C three n? Divide by this complex refraction group. It's just completely random what you're doing. Are you breaking R symmetry? Uh, yeah, because I'm, uh, yeah, you can consider the full modular space, but uh, it is easier to just choose uh, not, one. I, I mean, are you breaking or not? Is this a physical mechanism? No, no. The the, the modular space, uh, the full modular space would be C to the 3M modified by so the symmetry is this, uh, group. Yeah, so I yes, don't. Yes, see it is preserved. I don't see any reason to uh, make a division. The modular space is one space. There's no, there are no two spaces. Yeah, yeah so you're, you're right. So this will be easier because if you consider only these slice, which is well, only the Coulomb right with respect to an n equal to the algebra, then you will have complex codimension one singularities. While if you look at the full modular space, the, the, the singularity will be complex codimension three. So this is a bit easier uh, to do. You always have complex codimension one. Well, uh, the, the modular I mean, space is a single singular. Are you claiming that there are two uh, uh, regions in the modular space where the physics looks different? No, no, of course, think... because they... no. So I, there's, there's, no there's no such. No such claim was made, right? It's just saying you have some three-dimensional space. You can look at any slice in it, and the information should be contained there as well. I think that's a statement. It's enough to do this. Or the the questions that he tries to answer, it's enough to look at this one-dimensional slice in a three-dimensional space. If you need to look at the full three-dimensional space to answer a different question, then one can, but this I seems to be like to all right. What is the, uh, what's this information which is included? Okay. Yeah, so we will see that uh, also I can maybe go on with this. But we will see that uh, if you choose this last, the still uh, you don't find a, a consistent charge lattice. So if it doesn't work when you make this choice, it will not work uh, if you consider the full um, on the space. But maybe we'll see. Okay, so 
um, similar to the oriented fold, we consider the states on these ZT singularities. And again, we can compute uh, the charges of states from things. Here, you have to be careful uh, about the fact that when you cross the S fold, you will have an trivial action of uh, SL to Z. Uh, but you can do this. And well, in this example, these are the charges that you find with an F1 and an D1. And if you consider more generic PQ things, uh, the, the, the charges will be some linear combination of these two. So these two generate the lattice of charges. And you can compute the, again, this invariant, the absolute value of the function of the Dirac uh, pairing, and it turns out to be three. And again, three is not uh, 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 an allowed value for this invariant, it's either two or one. So and again, you conclude that uh, the ZT singularity must be due to a discrete aging. Right, so this is what we just said. And uh, this was true when you have no discrete portion around the asphalt. But actually, you can turn on uh, a trivial discrete portion, even in the s fold case, similar to what we did in, with the oriented fold. And again, the difference is that now we have states that can handle the s fold. This means that you have more charges, and the absolute value of the fact in this invariant is equal to one, which is an allowed value. So when you add the discrete portion, you find an interactive CFT of this singularity. And we did this for the k equals three case, but you can do it for the k equals four and six cases as well. And at the end, you find that uh, uh, these results, so the fact that without discrete torsion, you have a discrete gauging, but with discrete torsion, you don't have a discrete gauging. This match with the holographic results. Uh, that was found by Aron in 2016. And they were quickly, the way that they do this uh, is actually to, to see that when you have a discrete gauging, this means that you add some theory, you, do, you gauge a zero form symmetry, and in turn, you will get the magnetic two form symmetries. And uh, they computed the two form symmetry from, let's say, the, the oligraphic, uh, from an oligraphic point of view. Okay, but this is, I mean, this is a good, uh, good match. So, again, as a summary, uh, we start with some geometric Coulomb branch, and depending on the discrete torsion, we define the discrete gauging or not. And this is important. For example, if you want to compute the central charges of this theory, you can use the shapir tachikawa formula, which relates a particular combination of the central charges to, well, a combination of the decrease of Coulomb branch invariants, which uh, depend on this group and uh, uh, classified by mathematicians. So this is easy to do. But the point is that it's known that this formula only holds uh, if you have no state gauging. So for the second case, you can just do the computation with this formula. But for, for the first case, you have to see that the, this additional Z3 is a discrete gauging, and you apply this formula to this new uh, Coulomb branch. The, the, the central charges turn out to be different in the two cases. Um, right. So up now, these were all uh, checks of results that were already known. But uh, we'll go to the case of exceptional s -folds. And the idea to, to define the exceptional S is that, um, well, in regular S for the this action is, a, as I said, a combination of the, an asymmetry twist and uh, an S duality that becomes a symmetry. And so uh, alternatively, as coming from a 6D 2,0 theories on a toss, where if you just compactify it, you get uh, SUN and equals four superiamils. And instead, if you compactify it, a symmetry twist uh, and uh, the S duality twist, you will get the N equals three S fold SCFTs. So the idea uh, now is that you, instead of putting the AN 2,0 theory in the torus, you will put the ER or the N 2,0 theory. And you expect to find other N equals three S fold SCFTs where you compactify and add your symmetry twist, your S duality twist. And the theories that you get, you call exceptional as for the uh, theories. They were introduced by uh, Iñaki Gisel Sebaria and Diego Regalato in 2016. And actually a more proper way to, to do so will be to construct uh, an anterior setup and wrapping M5 brains on a torus in this anterior setup that uh, involves uh, some new duality twist. Um, but I will not review this today. We don't have uh, time for that. So instead, uh, if you believe that uh, these theories exist, well, uh, you see that the difference between these two combatification is the presence of 
the asymmetry twist and the F duality twist. These are all uh, concepts that are well defined in the SUM and equals four. So you can try to mimic uh, the presence of the S fold starting from the S1 and equals four, introducing an asymmetry twist and an S duality twist. And the point here is that actually also have a non trivial um, role played by a right transformation uh, in the type to be set up that we looked before with the identical that the S fold is by transformation. Is due to the fact that the the um, the F fold and Orientifold are identified in the image, and now if you try to put the the other uh, type E and type D two comma zero theory on the toes, you will have to find uh, well there will be some vital element of either uh, the type E algebra or type D algebra that plays a role in this uh, projection, and this idea allows it to generalize. Uh, uh, this procedure to the ER and DN case. And for example, they allowed the uh, uh, KD Martone and Zafir to compute the Coulomb brand geometry for the exceptional S fold theorems. And the, the result for the Coulomb branch is always uh, C to the rank of the theory, not the sub by some uh, complex crystallographic uh, reflection group. And they classified uh, for each type of algebra and for K equals three, four, and six, which specific uh, uh, complex reflection group uh, you, you will get here. And uh, we will look uh, we, will, we will look uh, especially at the type E cases. Um, so you have 90 as I said. In each case, uh, you will find some Coulomb brush that is a C mod modded by some uh, reflection group that uh, is with properties that are well known. They, they are studied and fully classified by mathematicians. And now our question will be to understand uh, uh, of all the singularities that you have on these Coulomb branches, which singularities support uh, um, non trivial dynamics and which are due to the state caging, if any. So one way to do it will be to mimic this procedure going from the n plus four theory to the S four theory on the charge lattice. And this can be done, but there are some subtleties. Uh, the first one is that you will find a lot of uh, um, charge lattices that uh, are invariant under uh, this combination of vital transformation, asymmetry, and duality. And this is not bad already. In the case of the oriented fold, you know that you can have different answers uh, corresponding to the different uh, discrete torsion. But the specific role of discrete torsion is, uh, at this point, not well understood in this particular procedure. And also, among these more many results that you will get, the derivatization is not guaranteed. So, for each cases, you can do something like that, find all the charge lattices that are consistent with the, your projection, and for each of them, check uh, whether the derivatization condition is guaranteed. That's a lot of work. You can do it on a case by case basis, and we do it in our paper. But today, instead, we will take a more roundabout way. And instead, consider a wider class of SCFTs, which are uh, SCFTs are characterized by these invariant or characteristic dimension, uh, different from one or two, and we'll develop a constraint on the possible charge lattices for these theories. Um, right. So there are any questions up to up to here? Okay. Uh, so, we'll pause a little bit from s -fold and instead of talking about this invariant. So, in any n equals to CFT, you can define this invariant. This was introduced by Chakotti, Del Zotto, Mutton, and Robscope. And you can compute it from the degrees of Coulomb branch invariants. Um, you take uh, your degrees of invariance, you take a common factor lambda, such that uh, what uh, you're left with is the DI or integers, the the like greater common divisor is one, and then your uh, three dimension kappa is to uh, this uh, function of lambda. And uh, this environment has some very nice properties. In particular, it can only take eight possible values uh, one, two, and so on. And physically, it is related to how the U1 asymmetry is broken on the column branch. So the U1 generally is broken to some. ZK subgroup, and uh, 
The ZK uh, is related to the Cartes dimension as shown here. So for uh, when it is completely broken, the Cartes dimension is one. And uh, for all the other cases, so uh, we have this uh, unbroken uh, subgroup of the asymmetry. So this is the symmetry that you have in any generic point of Lombardia. In particular, for the theories that we look at, uh, theories with uh, Cartes dimension near for one or two, you have Z3, Z4, or Z6 uh, symmetry that is not broken on the Coulomb branch. So we look at all these cases, and this is because all S folds and exceptional S folds are all uh, into this uh, category, as well as some Nehan and Michansky theories. They all fall into this uh, uh, class of SCFTs. And you get additional properties whenever the character is different from one or two. Well, the first thing is that uh, that uh, unbroken symmetry, the Z3, Z4, Z6 uh, symmetry on the Coulomb branch, relates states uh, that are mutually non-local. So it will relate some state that uh, has electric charge, say, with some state that has uh, some magnetic charge. These are sitting a uh, multiplet of uh, the unbroken ZK symmetry on the Coulomb branch, on any point of the Coulomb branch. In particular, it means that uh, all these SCFTs are maximally strongly coupled. Uh, it means that whenever one, say, electric state becomes massless, you also get a magnetic uh, state that can become massless at the same time. So for us, this is important because it means that when we look at singularities of Coulomb branch, which is where some state become massless, you always have uh, multiple non-local states that are massless at the same time. And this means that the theory is on the singularities are SCFTs, as opposed to uh, infrared free theories that generally you can have uh, supported on singularities of SCFTs. But in this case, on, on, on for dimension one singularities, well, there are many singularities, but in particular on dimension one singularities, we will have an SCFT. And so we can use that uh, classification for an SCFTs that we used before. And um, technically, uh, we're looking at the charge lattice, and for this series, you can identify the charge lattice, which is some lattice of rank 2R with a complex lattice. And the direct pairing between uh, two states can be rewritten in terms of some H, where H is a positive definite uh, emission form going from this lattice to this particular quadratic field. And this is nice because now we can, have, uh, we can use uh, the power of uh, Emitian, positive definite emission forms. And so what we will do now is uh, rewrite the ideas that I used uh, up to now in terms of this H. So instead of the direct pair in J, we will look at this H. So, I mean, you take a generic uh, N equals to a CFT with this characteristic dimension different uh, for one or two, and then you can choose a basis uh, of uh, your charge lattice such that uh, your QI uh, well, will become massless at some co-dimensional singularities. And as I said, the Fafian of the lattice of charges that become massless on co-dimensional singularities must be equal to one or two. This is because you always have SCFTs. And if you rewrite this in terms of DH, this means that the diagonal entities of DH in this basis are either one or two. And uh, they are only to two when uh, you have a singularity that supports n equals to star SU2 per minutes. Um, so instead, if you take a generic SCFT in this class without any singularities that support uh, SU2 n equals to star, uh, then this means that all the diagonal elements are, are one, right? And by the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, you can see that uh, the, then H must be the so, so all the off diagonal elements are zero. And this is because H takes values in this quadratic field. And uh, the only value that uh, uh, is allowed for the off diagonal elements will be zero. So H, uh, for any cho choice of basis here, it will be the identity matrix. And at the end, this means that you are looking at like, uh, a stack of rank one theories um, because all the for any choice for any singularities on the Coulomb branch, the states that are massless on singularities have zero direct pairing with the states that are massless on another. Series. 
So the single lines will be orthogonal to each other, right? So this means that instead, if you want uh, an SCFT that is not a stack of rank one theory, uh, well, you need at least one singularity that supports uh, SC2 n equals to star, or I guess more, more generally, a discrete gauging of SC2 n equals to star. So this is, uh, well, this is a constraint on the possible geometries of Coulomb branch for this uh, class of theory. And now we see that uh, this constraint shows us that uh, some of the exceptional S full theories do not admit uh, a charge lattice. Right, so let's go back to exceptional S folds now and apply this constraint that we just found. Uh, as an example, take the S fold of type E6 with K equals six. And what we care about is that the Coulomb branch is a C2 modded by this group G5. And it's known that the uh, Coulomb mention one singularity of this Coulomb branch have a transverse slice that is a C model Z3. And this transverse slice should correspond to the Coulomb branch of the rank one theories that support this on the singularity. And you see that this cannot be SU2 n equals to star or a discrete gauge in the uh, because the Coulomb branch then will be C mod Z2. Um, on top of that, this Coulomb branch is not a Cartesian product of uh, rank one Coulomb branches. So this means that uh, uh, the theory itself is not a stack of rank one theories. And this means that, uh, well, we don't have any singularities that support this theory. We are, this, doesn't, this is not a stack of rank one theory. And at the end, this means that there is no way. We, we are not satisfying our constraints, so there is no way to define this of the Coulomb branch. And at the end, it means that there are no BPS on any singularity of these theories. So all the singularities are distance versus lies. And this tells you that the theory itself is a gauging of a free theory. And by supersymmetry argument, well, you need this n equals to supersymmetry. The only candidate is uh, U1 squared n equals to superhuman. So we found that this particular is not, cannot be an interacting SCFT, doesn't admit a good charge lattice, but actually this tells you more than that. This tells you that you cannot have uh, an N equals to SCFT with this particular Coulomb branch. This does not depend on, uh, this whole argument doesn't depend on the particular M theory setup that we have for this as well. Uh, sorry, may, may I ask a trivial question here? So sure. So here, uh, the, the transverse lies, I mean, uh, so this theory have a stratification. So this C2 mod G5 should have some stratification, right? So and this should correspond to the uh, subgroup of G5, which is also a complex reflection group, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and then, can... ah, ah, I see, I see. So, so the Z3 is a, is a, is a, is a, is a is exactly the subgroup of G5. Yes, yes, it's a subgroup of G5. And the stratification was already computed by uh, uh, Martone and collaborators in the paper that I Ah, I see, I see, I see. And you can see that in the uh, stratification, uh, all the theories supported on Coulomb and Schumer singularity, well, one of them is a situation equals to star. So uh, I see, I see. Cheers. Thanks. Um, okay, so just to get some intuition of what's going on, uh, you take this Coulomb branch, you can picture it uh, more or less like this. Uh, you will have some uh, singular point where the SCFT is and some co-dimensional one singularities. Uh, and the transverse lies, as I said, is a similar zip tree. So for example, you can try to put a, a charge lattice uh, on this Coulomb branch. For example, you can try to put a charge lattice from the stratification that I just mentioned. And uh, then you look at, uh, for example, these two singularities, and uh, you try to put it in such a way that the Fafian of the sub lattices on singularities is as a nice value. Uh, it turns out to be, it can be one, because these are symbols between singularities. But if you do so, and then you compute uh, the direct pairing between some charges on this first singularity and some charges on the other singularity, well, this is not, uh, to, you, you got some fractional values. 
So this means that this operator will not be well defined. So instead, what you can try to do is to scale the charge lattice uh, enough uh, such Dirac pairing between uh, uh, charges from the first and the second uh, singularities are uh, well Dirac pairing is integer. But if you do so, well, you scaled your charge lattice up, and now if you compute again your fraction of the Dirac pairing on a singularity, you get a three, uh, which is not an allowed value. In some sense. You get a lower bound and an upper bound to how wide your charge lattice is, which is measured by this fraction. But the charge lattice is either too small or too large. So you, you, you cannot uh, both satisfy the Dirac quantization condition and uh, reproduce the correct uh, lattices on rank one theories at the same time. So that's just intuition to tell you that uh, why it is not possible to put uh, a good charge lattice on this column branch. Right, so this was an example. It was here, the E6 with k equals six uh, exceptional s fold by, then you do it for all the cases. You find that these four theories are similar. You do not admit a good charge lattice and they must be this kid gauging of uh, E theories. And then you can combine uh, uh, this constraint with the other constraint for uh, the Coulomb branch, particularly due to Marthone. These are constraints that relate the um, Central charges of T with the hand point singularities with the central charge of your SCFT. And uh, by combining the, this constraint with the power constraint from the charge lattice, also theories turn out to be discrete gauging of uh, free theories. Uh, so the only uh, good exceptionized folds of type E that we are left with is this one, as I told you at the beginning. Um, and if you want, you can compute the central charges of uh, this theory with the Fabi-Tachikawa formula. So this is the only uh, Coulomb branch geometry of this type that uh, as uh, that can allow a good uh, charge lattice. And this means that it can be an. Uh, right. So questions up to now. So just one last uh, thing. Um, as quickly told you before that uh, when we were looking at this invariant, uh, this uh, uh, fraction, that, well, this is related uh, physically to the order of the composites in the group. Uh, we use this in the case of rank one theory, matching it between, uh, well, the non-classification of rank one theories with uh, what we found on uh, co-dimension one singularities, but this is true in general. So you can take a general, CFT is compute the absolute value of this fraction at any rank, and this will give you the absolute the order of the one for symmetry group. Now, if you rewrite this fraction in terms of each, you get that uh, the order of the one for symmetry group is equal to the determinant uh, of H. And again, you can uh, combine this with the fact that uh, on the specific basis that I uh, talked before, uh, the uh, diagonal entries of H are always less than or equal to two. And then you can use a, a quality called an Adam inequality that bounds from above this determinant. It uh, tells the determinant that is less or equal to the product of the diagonal elements. So in this case, it will be less or equal than two to the R. So this means that there is, for this theory, there is an upper bound for the order of the one for symmetry group. Or if you want to think about uh, this uh, invariant as uh, a scale of your charge lattice, there is an upper bound to how sparse, how, how spread out your charge lattice is. So you, I mean, we know that there is a lower bound for that. The lower bound is simply given by the Dirac quantization condition. But now there is also an upper bound by essentially matching uh, the sub lattices on two dimension one singularities. And again, the singularity, this uh, inequality is saturated when H is diagonal. And with some similar argument to what we uh, did before, uh, this uh, corresponds to a stack of theories. So when uh, H is diagonal, your theory will be a stack of rank one theory. So this bound is saturated by stacks of rank one theories. If your theory is not, yeah, it's not uh, 
a stock of uh, lower rank theories, then this uh, inequality will be strictly lower than 2 to the R. Uh, good. Uh, so, recap, we looked at uh, some classes of inequality three SCFTs in four dimension, looking for presence of discrete gauging. That's because uh, uh, discrete gauging plays a role in the presence of singularities of one branch. And so we care about it. And we, we were able to reproduce the holographic results for what I'm called regular S folds, type A S folds, and produce the structure of Coulomb branch. And then we applied our techniques to uh, exceptional S folds. And in particular, in the tech E case, we find that many of these uh, are trigger. Trigger means so they are discrete gauging of uh, three theories. Uh, so, some possible future. Well, First of all, we can try to relax this uh, condition on uh, the characteristic dimension, because the idea that uh, you need to be able to define a good charge lattice on a Coulomb branch, and this must reproduce uh, the charge lattices over rank one uh, uh, on a uh, co-dimension one singularities, well, this is general. The, the condition of characteristic dimension equals to one or two was more a technical assumption that allowed to do nice computations. So it would be nice to see whether we can find other constraints if we relax this. So if we look at theories with the characteristic dimension one or two. And another possible direction would be to refine, as I was telling just a minute ago, find this upper bound for the order of the one for symmetry group when you look at theories that are half stacks of lower rank theory. And this is something that we are working on uh, right now. Um, Good, so I finished early, but uh, thank you for. Uh, um, All right, listening. let's thank, let's thank Simone. Do we have questions? I, I do have a question, yes. Uh, so I really don't, I don't understand, and I think it was pretty important, so probably should have asked before, uh, where does it come from the argument that there shouldn't be dynamics associated to these uh, complex similarities that come from the discrete gating. And in particular, how relevant is the fact that you have n equals to 3 versus n equals to 2 in this? So why you don't have uh, non-trivial dynamics is because discrete gating doesn't uh, uh, introduce new charge states. So before the discrete gating on these additional singularities, you didn't have anything massless, right? Because they were, these were not singularities. And when you do this discrete gauging, introduce new singularities, well, the discrete gauging doesn't uh, give you additional massless uh, charge states. So this but is here, why... I, here I have to say that I I, I don't agree. Uh, indeed, uh, with uh, Mario De Marco, uh, some work on the cyber solution of discrete gauging uh, not, not long ago, and we did find that there is some... Like in this singularity, you have some non-trivial theory. So, for example, if you discrete gates in SU3, you have this co-dimension one singularity. And in this co-dimension one singularity, you find that the cyber witten solution is the one not corresponding to some SU2 theory. So I I don't understand that point. Yeah. Maybe we can discuss later. Uh, yeah. But like if, if you gauge uh, charge conjugation, you said on SU3, or if you gauge. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you will find additional singularities. So you will get, uh, what is it, the C2 mod uh, G, the value of G2. Yeah, right? but, but it has, I, I would say that it has dynamics. But OK, maybe we can do that more after. OK, or well, maybe we can discuss uh, later, because uh, and uh, the C versus N equals 2, um, well, no, in this case, there is not much difference. At the end, uh, as uh, Ami was asking before, why do you fixate on the Coulomb branch? Uh, well, uh, that's because then I can generalize to n equals two because at the end our uh, constraint uh, is on the Coulomb branch uh, itself. In this case, uh, n equals three just says to understand two modulus space. Uh, so I just gave you the, the the formula for the Coulomb branch of these uh, exceptional assholes. I can find it, yeah, which is CR mod uh, G. But actually, any equality supersymmetry tells you that the, the full modular space is already fixed by this. It will be C to the 3R mod G. 
Um, mm. But for the constraint itself, uh, uh, no, there is not uh, much difference. You still need an SU to any equals to start your on something like. Okay, do we have more questions? Okay, if not, uh, I would say let's thank Simone. And uh, we can go off the record.